we need to work on the seven main kinds of stems or binyanim of the perfect verb. Now again, they're all, except for kal, they're all named for the um, paradigm word pa'al. And so different things happen to the pa'al uh, under these different stems or binyanim. So for example, we have the nifal, and as you can see, there's a noon uh, attached to the beginning of that. And then the second class, and these are all intensive because when there is not a ayin in the middle letter, they all take a dagesh, as we'll see presently. So this family or group, we would call the pl, the puwal, and the hitpa'el to refer to these. And pl typically if there's both a kal form and a pl form of the root, this would be a more intensive or complex. And then a pua would be the passive of whatever the pl is, and hitpa'el would tend to be reflexive or passive as well. And then we have the hif'il and the hof'al. And again, hof'al has a kamat's katon or kamat's hatuf, so it's that o sound. And hif'il is causal, and the hofal, that's the passive of whatever the hifil is. Now it's Greenberg that gives us these families, the Kal family, the PL family, and the hifil family. And I strongly suggest uh, to think through the way that the verbs work like this, because the three main verbs are the Kal, the PL, and the hifil. And then there's lesser uses of these other ones but they sort of fit the paradigm of that particular family. We'll take a moment to work through some of the main comparisons. Here we have the kal. Katal, katala, katalta, katalt, katalti, katalu, kataltem, katalten, katalnu. And then you'll notice the nifal um, over here, and these each have the noon prefixed to the beginning of the root. And when you look at the end of the word, this is what's so important about memorizing the call. They all have exactly the same suffixes as the call do. So the only real difference is recognizing what happens by putting a noon on the beginning of the main form katal that we've already memorized. So then we have uh, all the same kinds of things, right? Um, this is niktal. He was killed. So it's 3ms, it has the same subject, third person masculine singular, and nifal typically is either going to be in passive or reflexive. So if we come across the term niktal, we would either translate that in the passive, he was killed, or he killed himself, depending on uh, the context. Next, notice the PL. Here we have the call and the PL, and again, all the endings of the PL, all of the suffixes that contain the pronoun information, 3MS, 3FS, 2MS, 2FS, 1CS, 3CP, 3MP, 2FP, 1CP, they're all exactly the same. The only differences are in the, uh, the vowels and also in the dagesh, which is in the ayin letter. So this is where the um, paradigm letter pa'el just doesn't work to show us the pl or any of the ones in the pl family because they all take a dagesh in the middle root letter. And that's why in modern times we don't use pa'el, but we use katal. So here we have yiktal. Now in the case of uh, when there's a, 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 a root that appears both in the kal and PL, typically then we show a more complicated meaning or an intensive meaning in PL. So if katal is he killed, then kitel is he slaughtered or something like that. Again, I would encourage you, don't worry about these endings. You already know those, but pay attention to what else distinguishes the PL and sets it apart from the call. And that would again, especially be the um, dagesh doubling the ayin letter uh, all through the P 
Peel um, paradigm. The third family of uh, verb binyan is the hifil family, and this is causal. And here you'll notice there's a couple of distinguishing features when compared with a kal. What's the same? It has all of the same endings as the kal does. So once we know the kal, we know all the pronouns and how they work with hifil. What we have to work at then is recognizing the difference between the kal form and the hifil form. And here you can see there's two main differences. There's the he affixed to the beginning, and then a hiric yod um, appears in many of the forms, but not all the forms. You'll notice when there's a heavy ending with a tav or the like at the end of these, uh, several of these words, then there is no hiric yod, it sort of collapses. But whenever there's a lighter ending, uh, like hictil, then we see the hiric yod in the middle. And so that's a secondary indicator. But the primary indicator is the he that's affixed to the beginning. Now the sense of hifil is causal. So in this case, if we have katal, we have he killed. Hictil, he was caused, uh, he caused to kill, or he made to kill, something like that. Uh, different sentences and different terms will function differently, but the causal works really well. Start out woodenly and then find a smoother way to make your translation. I want to take a moment and just caution us against overdoing it. Now, a lot of times we're tempted to always look for what's the sense in the call root Versus, uh, excuse me, call stem versus the PL stem. In some cases where there's a term that appears in both stems, like sin pe, uh, uh, samak pe resh, safar means count. Si per, the PL, means to recount or to narrate. So here we have a more intensive meaning with the PL, and so we have a deeper sense to it, count and recount. But with the word bikesh, there is no call form of bikesh. Therefore, we don't make any special sense to it. It just means he, he sought or he was seeking, something like that. So we only have the more intensive when there's both a call and a PL form. Same thing is true in uh, nifal, and we kind of have to go term by term. So if we take the term shamar, to keep or to guard, here in kal, we have he kept, he guarded. And in nifal, nishmar would be he was guarded or he was kept. But in the case of the word lechem, lam and he, chet, meim, uh, there is no kal form. Therefore, this doesn't get a passive sense. We just say, he battled, or he fought. So again, just keep in mind that the sort of um, nuance that goes with the root only goes, uh, excuse me, with the stem, only goes with the stem when there's both a kal and the pl or nifal in that form. And then beyond that, kind of go term by term and see how the nuances work with that particular term. But the main caution here is don't overdo something just because it's in the PL or NIFAL form. Uh, excuse me, um, stem. Here's a series of examples of brief phrases featuring the different stems of the perfect verb. So here we have Ashur Asa Hashem Elohecha La Farao. And that um, we read as which uh, the Lord your God has done to Pharaoh. And in this case, the um, kal perfect verb, asa, uh, it's just very, very straightforward and simple. It's kal, it's light, and it doesn't have any extra things added to uh, the verb root. So it's just a kal stem. Another example comes from Deuteronomy. El ha'aretz asher 
nishba avodecha. And this we would read, to the land which he has sworn to your ancestors. Now, in this case, here we can see that this is in the nifal um, stem because of the noon prefixed to the perfect verb. But because of the nature of the term uh, shava, sworn, it's not passive or reflexive. It's just a straight up word. And so here we just say nishva. We would just translate it without any particular nuance. He has sworn. Here's an example. Vazot ha mitzvah asher tziva Hashem Elohem. Now in this case we have, and this is the commandment which the Lord your God has commanded. Now again, we can see the PL form, tziva, and we can see it has the doubled root letter signified by the dagesh, but in this case, tziva just has a normal sense. We don't do anything different to it. It's just he has commanded, uh, since there's not a counterpoint counterpart call form of this word. One more example. Ba'et havi hivdil Hashem et shevet lavi. In that time, the Lord divided the tribe of Levi, or Probably better, he set apart the tribe of Levi. Now, two very minor things here. First, remember in the Pentateuch that the 3FS pronoun, or in this case it uses demonstrative, um, that time, it's normally spelled he with a yod, but in the Pentateuch, it's always spelled with the Vav. But we just treat it as normal. In the time, that one. In that time. And then here, take note of the Hephiel. And you can see that it has both the primary indicator, the He prefix. But it also has the Hiric Yod in the middle. And again, this, this term, we would just translate, He has divided or He has set apart. So in that time, the Lord has set apart the tribe of Levi. Again, what you can see by looking across these examples is there is spelling differences and morphological differences between uh, the Kal stem and the Nifal stem, PL stem, and Hifiel stem, but there's not a real strong difference in terms of the meaning. So you have to go word by word and case by case. Sometimes there is a strong difference, but don't overdo it. That's not the main thing. But for parsing, we do have to recognize there are these other stems, and these are three of the main stem families that will run across uh, stem sorts. Nifal, and then the PL, which is the head of the PL family, and Hifiel, which is the head of the Hifiel family.